did amazing stuff, had a huge effect on the people who knew him, both in his cohort and from elsewhere in the world. So I'm really, really delighted that this award can keep his memory alive and keep us thinking of him further down the road. Um, not, his family couldn't be here with us tonight, but they send their regards and their thoughts and are very glad that they're able to help support these kinds of projects and these kinds of students. I think with that, I'm going to hand this over. We have three projects. We're just going to go in order of their listing. The first project is called Dracula and Dracula. It is uh, produced by Lin Lindsay Cavallo, who's a BFA in art, Anna Feya, Who's a, who graduated in May and is a, was a BHA in Ethics, History, and Public Policy and Architecture, and Samantha Riordan, who's a BHA in Creative Writing and Architecture. Please tell us about your work. All right. So we have Cover. All right. <laughs> Scratch, uh, the second and third puppets you've ever made. Yes, it was very impressive. Big learning experience. <laughs> yeah. Um, in fact, the whole project is kind of a big learning experience for us. And you can kind of see uh, we're going to show a highlight reel of um, some stuff from our videos, which we've been uploading to YouTube. Uh, you're going to see kind of the change and the growth and like the refinement of the project as we learned how to how to film, how to edit, how to use puppets. Um, yeah. So this is. This is a really passionate product yeah. for us. We care and about, we it, care about it, it, not just because it's about monsters, but because we talk a little bit about uh, about monster issues, which sort of parallel real world issues like discrimination and stuff like that. Um, we thought it would be a good vehicle for that because we feel that we're not qualified to talk about actual discrimination being two white people. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're yeah. doing it with vampires. Yes. Um, and very passionate about the project, and so no, oh no, no. Um, no. just use the arrow. <laughs> I well, I'm a PC. I don't. Can we get? Can we I don't. Oh yeah. I know we feel when we're trying to set things up for class. Treats 
sometimes. Like a right. chocolate cake type of thing. Right. Well, you got to go ahead and collect chocolates. Like chocolate. Chocolate. I can't believe this guy knows so much. You're like an expert. I guess it's kind of hard. You... I don't think you have to go Exactly as you see it. <clears throat> we'll come in with an idea for an episode. We'll say, okay, 
this is the episode where we talk to Dracula Jr. about how Dracula has been distant lately. And that's what we'll have, and we'll go and we'll sit down and we'll film and sort of play off each other and sort of learn more about the characters in the process, which I think is really nice to see the characters grow in ways that we didn't necessarily expect them to. We should demo the puppets. Yes, we have puppets. Just, so like, just ignore the fact that they were on plungers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was trick of the trade. Professionals do that, as they say. Oh, we also, um, Lindsay recently added arms, arm, uh, hand uh, articulation, and uh, more stable arms, which you kind of saw like uh, the, the poles in like the earlier clips, but this is much more stable and then grippable and more bent. So thank you for coming. Yes, it is very nice to meet you all. I. I'm so happy that you have all looked at our vlogs. It's, you know, it means a lot. We hope you like seeing us. You know, we have a lot of things to say about vampires, about vampire culture, and everything that we face, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's just about us. Yeah, it's just about our lives and what we do. You know, we hope that we can connect with people. That's what we want. Yes. Uh, you are so good at talking. Oh, thank you. That's, I have to give uh, presentations at work, so uh, I, practice, I, practice. I I guess one day I don't know what that's like. Oh yeah, didn't you? You said you had a job interview coming up. Oh so yes, I, I do. Ha ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> I will talk about that in another episode, perhaps. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you all for coming. I'm, I'm going to give it back to Sam now. Thanks, Jack. <laughs>
So if you think about uh, an interactive narrative, if there are three binary decision points, all of a sudden, if you're having an influence over it, you now have nine different stories that you have to create. And creating nine different stories, first of all, is very impractical as far as the amount of content that needs to be produced. And if you only have three interaction points, that's also not going to be a great audience experience. They're going to say, that was an interactive <laughs> show. I didn't do anything. Uh, so that, in some ways, is, is how it integrates with, with the work that I've been doing, because it really is about the entire system, uh, creating the, a system which involves both technology and live actors, performers, uh, and those different aspects, and, and altering different story structures uh, in order to try and create these different types of experience. And it, and it really does branch across both sides. Um, so you can see here uh, a graphic from one presentation going over uh, just what I was talking about as far as audience I.O. and the exponential narrative branching. Um, so leading up to this project, there were a couple of ones that have been implemented which I learned lessons from and kind of laid the foundation for this isn't it pretty to think so experience. Uh, the first of which was called Isolation, a Collaborative Piece, uh, which took place about two years ago. And in this piece, uh, the audience members actually created the show in real time. Uh, there were no actors, there was no rehearsal process. <coughs> Audience members, upon entering, sent a text message and I logged their phone numbers and then they were assigned a role in the show, different phone calls and text messages, which were then delivered directly to your phone. Uh, and so I know when my parents were going through the piece at one point, they got a phone call and they thought that it was me talking to them. And so they started talking back and they were like, oh no, wait, it's part of the piece. Uh, and so <laughs> having an actor deliver a monologue directly to you is a, a really interesting experience. Uh, however, Unfortunately, if you haven't seen the piece, I'm going to give away the twist. Uh, halfway through the piece, it actually switched uh, because I've been gathering information about the audience members throughout the first half of the piece. And the second half of the piece was featured dynamically generated text messages and phone calls, uh, which then made you were collecting information about your fellow audience members. Uh, so you were attempting to find out, rather than about this fictional character who you've uncovered their story, uh, you're now finding out about, oh, what is the, the name of Carrie's cat? Uh, or something like that, and it created for some really great conversations in the room as far as the, the ethics of, uh, one of my favorite experiences with this piece was when I was at the National Conference for the Alliance for Arts at Research Universities, I had two 50-ish age faculty members from different universities yelling at each other about someone's cat, and they were just like, we can't do it because it's amoral, and it's like, but we have to win. Uh, <laughs> And then, and then after the fact, when we were kind of dissecting the experience, you said, you know, the, the reason why I was so passionate about that was I walked into the space, I'm like, it's technology, I'm not good with technology. And so when all of a sudden I felt like I was getting the handle for it, I was like, well, I got to prove I can, I can do the technology just like anybody else. And it, it created for these uh, interesting uh, experiences. However, both of those pieces didn't feature live actors. Um, obviously, the first piece was entirely audience members. The second piece featured recorded audio. So I was... Having learned a lot of lessons from those about how to structure these pieces and, and different possibilities, uh, I wanted to start exploring how that interaction could extend into more traditional forms of theater. Uh, so in what ways can we make it so that it, it is more of that traditional audience model of, of sitting and watching a show. Uh, and so it, the logical choice was to uh, do a musical, probably the like, most complicated form of show that you can produce. <laughs> Uh, so, the initial idea for the, this piece, when, when it was proposed last November, um, derived primarily from uh, the, the School of Drama each year puts on a, a cabaret. Uh, and so it was actually during this cabaret that I said, oh, you know, there's a possibility there. Uh, and then also one of the, the discoveries that I had made in these initial pieces about the idea of kind of flipping on its head uh, the I.O. system so that instead of uh, having this kind of limited interaction through the stage, you actually, as your crowd grows, so does the number of possible connections and possibilities. And so you actually reverse from kind of the, the linear to exponential to based on your audience size, you actually have more possibilities and more interesting interactions, uh, which obviously factored into that kind of back end of the consultants piece. So putting these two ideas together of kind of a cabaret style show with audience interaction, the initial diagram I submitted looks something like this. Uh, and so the idea behind it was that there were different actors in different uh, kind of soundproof boxes uh, and that the audience members could then listen to one of these boxes over their phones. And based on how the audience, which box the audience was listening to, there was a live mix playing through the speaker. So in many ways the audience was determining the mix of the show uh, through this kind of real-time interaction. However, uh, due to different kind of like socioeconomic status, uh, racial backgrounds and whatnot, uh, it wasn't an accurate representation. 
Uh, and so kind of modeling the way in which our, our society sometimes can, there are these external factors which influence the way in which we're interacting with individuals and, and you, you can focus in on an issue that's really important to you but that only can, that has some influence on other people but not necessarily as much as we would like to have. Uh, and so dealing with a lot of uh, those sorts of ideas and this idea of how does this one person's experience influence everyone else's experience and how does everyone else's experience influence that one person's. So that was kind of cool and exciting. Uh, there was one little problem with that design. Um, it turns out that it is incredibly hard to do a couple of things in that diagram. Uh, one of which is to create a soundproof box on stage which you can like see the actor performing, uh, but also have it be like reasonably soundproof so that it's not just leaking out to the audience, particularly at the close proximities that these pieces are generally performed in. Uh, additionally, live streaming audio over any sort of channel and whatnot runs into a lot of issues, uh, musically speaking, because it has to be so precisely synchronized that even if you get off by, by a couple hundred of, of milliseconds or something like that, it, it can throw off the rhythm and the experience of the piece. Uh, so we started to, to iterate and we started to come up with some different ideas. Uh, the show began to deal a lot with politics and so we looked at the possibility of taking interaction away from the, the phone broadcast and the idea that there were kind of directional speakers going to different areas of the audience and then you would actually as an audience member physically move around in order to hear different characters and that way you were kind of casting your vote with your body. Uh, then due to kind of some time constraints and, and other ideas that we were running into, we came up with what is kind of a more traditional theatrical approach of, well, what if at one point during the piece we just split off into different rooms, which solves kind of that isolating sound problem. Uh, so we, we ran through a bunch of these ideas. Unfortunately, throughout the process, it, it became kind of clear that we were having to make these trade-offs between uh, live performance and really what ended up being installation to a degree. Um, a lot of the things that were complicating the live performance process would be solved by installation, but installation would also take away uh, from a lot of the goals that we were trying to accomplish through this piece initially. Uh, so, for instance, the, some of the purposes for live performance were that that was pretty much the core thing was we wanted interactivity in a live performance, um, but there were limitations we were running into, physical technical issues, um, and then like why does it happen in theater, why isn't it just a web app if it's like this pre-recorded video that you're watching. So, what we ended up working towards was a, a fusion approach, as it were, uh, which when I mentioned this to uh, Stephanie at the start of the year, she goes, oh, so now we have two projects involving puppeteering. Uh, so, the uh, one aspect of it is a performance in which certain portions are pre-recorded, allowing for interaction while others are live, uh, which as an extension, these two components are tied together through puppeteering and kind of dance. The bodies and movement are live, but the head and singing are pre-recorded. And so you'll see in a second how that solves the kind of live streaming problem. Uh, and then also it presents opportunities to have multiple instances of the same character on stage at once, uh, which has some, some unique interaction narrative possibilities, uh, such as at, at one point in the, the show, uh, the character is dealing with three different instances of himself from different points in time and, and seeing how he would have interacted at that point. Uh, so this diagram gives an idea of, uh, the, the final thing is kind of a commodity synchronized selective audio video system, uh, is the, the technical term I was signing to it, but essentially in any movie making program that you have, iMovie or any of those sorts of things, you have this ability to separate a video track from an audio track. And that we then take the video track and have it on these iPads which are going on stage for the performers and take the audio track from all three of these audio tracks and have it on the device for the audience member. And so that way I as an audience member can select box three and all of a sudden I'll be hearing the audio which is synchronized with this video. We can select box one and have that there. And then on the back end as far as how that works, um, all that needs to be synchronized is actually kind of the, the timestamps of the different video and audio tracks. Uh, and, and there are technical issues as far as delays and differences in, in time step and all that. But effectively, so long as this phone knows where the, the video is, it's able to, to keep this synchronized without using any sort of uh, special front end software, though obviously the, the master audio synchronization software is, is code that I'm custom writing. Uh, so, Throughout this process, I've had a, a really great team uh, who has been helping kind of iterate on these designs. Uh, it's actually one of the most exciting parts of this experience. Uh, a lot of the previous projects I've worked on have pretty much been me and a laptop. Um, but uh, Stephen Conti, who was a director, direct graduate in the class of 2013, uh, because I'm working on kind of the code and writing, has, has taken on the role of directing this piece, actually. 
uh, Theodore Kleckman, who is in the room, hi Theo, uh, is working as the, the composer on the piece uh, and all the kind of crazy ideas as far as how we can use this selective audio effectively. Uh, we've been talking about uh, one of the pieces will be a four-part fugue written for six voices. Uh, so you essentially will have three performers performing and singing on stage live, and then you can only select one of the three parts, all of which are the same melody line, um, but which have different lyrics, and that way you learn about different characters and whatnot. So you essentially construct your own fugue uh, using this kind of selective uh, system. And then uh, Sophie Kane, who was not able to be here today, but it is her birthday, so take a look at her picture, <laughs> and if you see her around campus, wish her happy birthday. Uh, so. Uh, as far as the actual final performance date, uh, we would like to perform this hopefully during Playground, the festival of student work, which the School of Drama hosts every year. Unfortunately, that announcement as to whether we were accepted or not is not until next Wednesday. <laughs> so, hopefully, December 10th through 12th, uh, there will be a performance here on campus. Uh, and if that doesn't come through, we'll, we'll figure something else out. <laughs> so, uh, so just a, a couple of, of special thanks uh, to individuals who have been involved through the process. And then thank you. And I guess we'll skip the questions. We'll do questions at the end. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. And our third project is a, a board game called Pump Yard, produced by Bryce Summers, who is a uh, pursuing a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science. So Bryce, all yours. Yes. My name is Bryce Summers. Um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a computer science computer science student. Um, I like to talk. I like to talk. I like to talk about my home yard game. So, so the, so the first thing you might be wondering is, is why did I use the word the word hump, hump? That sounds that sounds a little bit provocative. <laughs> so, so first of all, I like to I like to dispel 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 your worries and say this is a technical term term in the real industry. So, so, so inside, inside the rail, rail industry, they, they have these, they have, the, they have, they have, gig, they have gigantic yard, yards, yards in the middle of the country where lots and lots of train, trains come in. And, and when the trains come in, they might come in from the east, east coast and you have trains from all, all over the place and they come into the yard and, 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 and the, the workers in the yard have to tear the trains apart and we, and we, combine, we combine them in, way, in way, ways so that, so that they can, they can be they can be shipped into trains to their to the destinations going, going out of the yard. So this this will so so kind of so 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 the reason the reason these yards use the reason these yards have have these these hills called called humps is 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 the incoming tra trains can push the tra can push the train to the top of the hill, and then and then then and then they can they can they can and then they can they, and then they can de they, they can decouple the cars. And the car literally rolls down a hill due to the force of gravity into a binary search street. Although they don't, they don't call them that. They call they call them, they call them just branching track track tires. So the rail so so it turns out the railroad industry over over the past hundred year, years has been has been has been doing has, has been has been has been performing computer science in the real world. You, know, you, you actually you actually need to know about algorithm design. In order, in order to move to move these trains, these trains they fit, they go on very rigid patterns. So, so I, I was I was, I was inspired, inspired by the by the by these novel these, these novel ideas inside the rail in, rail industry to make to make to make a board to make a board game about 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 data structures. So so um yeah so so we're gonna call it hump, hump, we're gonna call it hump, we're gonna we're gonna call it hump yard the hump yard the board game. So, 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 so inside, inside this, board, this board game, you've got this, these first things called tracks. So, so inside, inside the real, inside the real world, the real, inside the real world, real world, you have, you have, you have tracks on the tracks on the ground, and these become the in, infrastructure. Um, um, the computer, the computer science analog would be mem memory. Each of these tracks represents a given, a given memory location. And rolling a, rolling a, 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 rolling, rolling a train down the track represents moving a piece of data to, to a new memory location. Um, inside this game, we also have rolling stock cars. Cars. 
So, so on, on these tracks, you have, the, you have these, these cars. And in computer science terms, we would call this data. So, they, so, so, they, so these cars each inhibit a particular, these cars each inhabit a particular, pla a particular place in, in, mem in memory. And so by building, by build, by building these, these tracks, there's a certain, there's cer there's cer there, there are certain movements the car these cars can make. So, so, the, so, 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 so this, this, these tracks and cars become an an analog for these, these things in computer, science, in computer science that we call data structures. You know, they, 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 even look, they even look the same, you know. So, um, you, might, you might be wondering, what exactly, what, what, you might be wondering, what exactly is a data structure? So, so a data structure, a data structure is is a way is, is a way of organizing information such, such that it can be used used efficiently on a computer. Um, have, have any of you ever been to a grocery store? There's, there's a giant giant eagle down 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 the street, and it's a really good example of this. Um, when you walk into the grocery store, you notice there 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 are these data storage devices called shopping carts. You know, they, they allow they allow random access. You know, they're they're, they're very nice. So, so at the entrance at the entrance to the grocery grocery store store, there's this data structure called I don't know I don't know what they call but it's the place where you, where you put the cart the carts in, and and in order to store the cart the carts com compactly, you know, you have to you have to push you have to push the carts in, in into into the structure. And and if you if you and if which if, if if you were to come to one of these things, which cards can you can you remove from it? Can you can you can you remove the middle one? Can can you remove the one at the very at the very end by the concrete wall? <laughs> no. The only one you can remove you can remove you can remove is the very last one because all the cards fold fold together. So in computer science, we we, we we call this structure a stack because you can only push cards on, onto it, and you can you can you can pop cards off off, off of it. Um, when when you exit a grocery store, have any of you ever waited in lines before? <laughs> <laughs> they're they're a little they're a little bit they're a little bit annoy, annoying, but they're they're, they're necessary. They're, um, so at the, end of, at the end of your grocery store experience, you go, in, you, go into, you go into something called a queue, where 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 the, the first person, the first the, the, the person who's been waiting the longest gets ser served first. So this has this kind of has the has the opposite vi vis visual structure. Instead instead of instead of instead of moving moving objects from the same side, side objects go in one side and they go out the other. Um, in, in, computer si in, in computer science, we, we use some, some much any, any way they want inside 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 of their yard. yard. and there, there, there's a lot there's a lot of stra strategy to doing the, doing doing this. You know, the, based on if if you they, um 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 very subtle differences in the design of the of the of these track yards can have profound have, can have the, very subtle differences in the design. The design of the design of these yards can have profound, profound ramifications for, for, for how for how efficiently they they can they can <coughs> sort they can sort train trains into new permutations. So the second the second component of the game, game, game are these things called contracts. So in the, so, so in the real world, if, if you operate if you operate a multi million dollar tra train train yard, it would be kind of, it would be kind of sad if no one ever used it. So, so, what, so what happens is, 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 is people people with train, trains want they, they want they want to go they want to go, go they want to go into a yard. So they'll, they'll have an incoming train. And it's coming from Chicago, and and it happens to be in a, in a particular configuration that can't that can't be changed on a, on a normal on a normal line because most pla most places along a train line are just straight lines. There's no switching tracks. It's it's impossible to to reconfigure them. So they get reconfigured once they come to the train the train yard. And so, so what, hap what, happen what happens is the incoming train come comes, and they let they let they, they let you know this is this is the con this is the configuration that I want you to change this into, and the play the players have to make an educated guess of how many how many move moves it will it will take for them to, to perform perform this transformation. So this so so player so in, in computer science ter terms the, play the players have to have to have to have to estimate the, the mm, mm, Players have to estimate the efficiency of their yard, and so, so, so the, play, the players have to kind of work out in their head. Oh, if I have if I have this this train, if they do if they do that, I have to move that there. 
they have to do they have to do some kind of they have, they have to do kind of some technical think, thinking about about about, about how, how many how what they have to think about are are there any edge edge cases are there any configurations that would be there would be there would be more de degenerate than other other cases so they 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 they, 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 they it requires them to make a general general estimation of of, of what of what the av the average cost for a random if for, for a random, a random change would be. So then, so then the incoming tra train, after they place their bids, the incoming train, the incoming train is shuffled, is shuffled, and and the, the person with the, the person with the lowest bid need, needs to needs needs to sim needs to simulate the train the train moving through the yard the yard, and if they can come up with a way a way to sort the train in. And under under the amount of moves moves that they bid, then 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 they score points. If they if they if they don't, then they don't score points. And the next the next person who had a much more reasonable estimation will, will have the opportunity the opportunity to, to do it. Yeah. So so for instance, for instance, the incoming train might be red car, red car, white car, purple car, and the outgo the outgoing train might that they, they might need to sort of be would be. Um, white, white car, red car, purple car, red car. Um, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to show a, dram a, a dramatization of the six a six car sort. So let's so let's let's, just, let's assume assume someone someone bid on the incoming train red, black, yellow, red, purple, white. And they said and they said they said they, they, they gave they gave some gave some sort of call. They they gave some sort of estimation of how long it will take. And then they have to they have to they have to physically do do it. So the first thing that they do is they would try, if, if, they, if they wanted to figure it out, if they wanted to test out whether it's possible, they would line, line up their cars. And the first move they might they might do is is they might move 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 the white the white the white car in the middle there because they think they think it, they think it will connect it, that that's a good spot. And then they can move the purple car around around uh, around, around to the front. They can move. They can move the red car out, out, out to the end because they know the red car needs needs to be needs to be the the red car needs to be the fir the, fir the first one. So they, so they know they can just move move that over there. They can put the, they can put the yellow car the yellow the yellow car at the end at the end end there. Notice no notice, notice how because of this the structure the structure of the train yard they can they are able to move to move this car on this side the, the white one and that car on the other side. That's facilitated because because both both sides have ex, ex, access to it. There's a looping structure, and then then the black black car can go can go right there. Then the red car can go can go there. The old, the old, can, the old car can back up. Then 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 they the move the entire train train down down to the yellow car. Then they can link this up with the red car. I think. Yep. And then, the, then the train just goes off. <laughs> so that's that's that's, that's the main that's the main pro, that's the main mechanic in the game. So so why so why might why might people care about this besides it being a very a very fun board board game? Well, the the, the rule set and the process behind playing 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 this game actually actually requires some want people people to do, to do the same types of thinking they do when they're developing al algorithms. I play. I played it, and it gives me the same feeling I, I get. I get when I'm trying to. I'm trying to craft a computer program. Um, the, comp the, com the components of the game, even if you don't use them for a board game, they can be very useful for ed education. Less, 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 less semester, I TA'd an introductory uh, data structures class, and I surreptitiously, without telling the computer science department, started start, start bringing. <laughs> Start start bringing bringing these pieces to my office my office hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the, the the students were were a little were, were a little bit surprised. They expected they expected me to like draw things out on paper, on paper, but I gave them these toys to play to play with, and they actually they see it's, it's, it, they seem they seem to do a pretty a pretty good job of communicating the idea the ideas to them. Um, um, and th this game, th this game is a little bit more, 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 more appealing to people who are not necessarily computer science ent enthusiasts. For, in for, for instance, for, for instance, my, si my, my sister seemed to really enjoy, enjoy playing it because, because she, she saw, she saw it more, more as a puzzle than a, than a, than a scary, a scary, scary mathematically infused technical pursuit. Um, 
Um, it's 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 also it's also very good for 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 for, for, for my dream my dream of data structure evangelism. You know, <laughs> you know, I, you know I, I thought I, sometimes 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 I dream at night that that every, every, that every every person in the United States should be required to take five five data structures courses. <laughs> but, but, but I get I get I get the feeling that might not be the most popular opinion. So, so 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna try sneak sneakily um 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 I'm I'm gonna try sneak sneakily sneak these ideas into people's li lives. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna try to force data structures on them. I'm gonna try I'm gonna, I'm gonna try I'm gonna try to let them let them realize how data structures are present in their lives, lives whether they want them to be or not. <laughs> now, you know, data structures have actually brought much happiness to everyone's life. Yeah. Um, so, so one, one, one potential thing I might want to do in the future is I might want to make it make a make a, stra a strategy guide or an algorithms te text textbook using some of the some of the more the more visual 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 concepts of moving tra moving trains. I think. I think that might that might be an effective an effective means means of, commu of communicating some some standard data structures information. Um, I think I, I think I think I'm going to be do, doing an outreach event where I, I, I think I'm going to demo 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 my game at some of, at some of the local local board game stores. Um, um, there's always room for more for more for, for more game more game design. The, the game design takes a lot a lot a lot of time. All that time is trying to figure out. Okay, how can I? How can I? How can I? How can I make the cognitive load, load of playing this game less and less, but keep, but keep, but keep, but keep, but keep the the realistic structure of what of what's happening. So I want, I want, I want the game to re to, to really really require. I want I, I want the game to form to form an actual bijection with the concept I'm trying to relate. I don't want people to just to just like click. To, I want I want people to just click a button that says they win. I want the actual structure structure of the game to mimic the information that I'm trying to convey. So, so, but, 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 but while I'm doing, while, while I'm doing that, I want to, I want to, I, I, I want it to be fun. I want it to, I want, I want it to be, to be appealing. Um, I also think, think, think that pump yard or at least its, its components can be, can be very, very useful inside the education system. Um, um, I, think, I, I, think, I, I, I think you said that we're going to do questions. Yeah, so thank you, Bryce. <laughs> but, and I know we've all been standing for a bit, so I feel like we need to move a little bit. Too, but if we can have uh, Sam and Lindsay and Kevin back up for questions. Thank, thank you all for listening to my presentation. Also, welcome to come up because they come and play or yes, you'll get to play. Come see things and chat. You are welcome. Come close to them. They're nice. They're very smart. <laughs> They're scary smart. Great job. Is that good? Thank you. Great winners. Good match. Yeah. Really great.